I'll just say this. It's crazy that someone as plain as you is getting married before me. You'd look better in that old dress, and even the groom and guests will say that to your face. I heard my sister's harsh words next to my ruined wedding dress. My heart sank with sadness. But as her older sister, I couldn't let her keep acting like this. I was determined to show her how happy I am and make her regret her bad behavior. My name is Amy. I'm 30 years old. And after dating Scott for five years, we recently submitted our marriage registration. Our wedding is coming up soon. Preparing the wedding invitations, choosing the food, and selecting the flower decorations has been tough, but thinking of it as a way to show thanks to everyone who has supported us keeps me going. One thing I've been especially focused on is my wedding dress. Wearing a wedding dress is a once-in-a-lifetime moment, and I've dreamed of wearing a pure white one since I was little. I spent quite a lot on it, and sometimes I wonder if it was the right choice. I think that dress suits you best, Amy. And it's been your dream, right? You've saved for it for so long, Scott told me. Thank you, Scott. Yes, it's a special day, so I'll wear the dress I chose with confidence, I replied. The dress I picked is beautiful, made with lots of lace and tulle, created by a famous designer. Just imagining myself in it, standing next to Scott at the perfect venue, makes me excited for our wedding day. It feels like a dream come true. But not everything in my life has been going smoothly. Amy, did you really manage to marry Scott? Don't you think he'll regret it? My sister Lauren said, smirking. Lauren, that's not something you should say, even as a joke, I snapped back. When I visited home, Lauren, who is three years younger than me, was lounging on the couch. She always knew how to say things that hurt. Even though she pretends she's joking, I know Lauren is being serious. Scott is so handsome. He's way too good looking for someone like you, she continued. You can't judge people by how they look, Lauren. Marriage is about much more than appearances. I replied, well, coming from you, that might actually sound believable. I never thought you'd get married before me, Lauren said. Stop it. I yelled. Lauren is always so confident, constantly working on her makeup and hairstyles to impress men. She's the type of person who checks herself in the mirror all the time. Ever since we were kids, she would often make fun of me in front of others, saying things like, Unlike me, my big sister isn't pretty. It's like she always needed to be the one on top. But even though she focused so much on looks, I never felt like I was less than her in other ways. Our relationship as sisters has never been great, and lately, her behavior has been even weirder. Hey! Amy, remember when Scott came over to meet our family recently? I was there too, right? Did Scott say anything about me? She asked. What do you mean? I replied. Like, wow, you have such a cute sister. Or maybe something like your sister is more refined and beautiful than you, she said. I was frustrated. I'm leaving, I said, trying to get out of our parents' house. As I was about to go, Lauren muttered to herself, acting all high and mighty just because you managed to get married, even though you're still so plain. Just wait and see. Excuse me, did you say something? I asked. Just go home already, she snapped back. This attitude wasn't new, so I left without thinking much of it. But things got even stranger later. On the day Scott and I were having our pre-wedding photo shoot, Lauren came to the location with our parents to watch. Oh... So, this is the dress you're going to wear on the big day, she commented. Lauren, the shoot is about to start. Could you please move aside? I asked. I was scheduled for a solo photo session first, and as the preparations were being made in the cathedral where the ceremony would take place, Lauren kept walking around, not caring about anyone else. All right, all right, I'll move. What's the big deal? Just because you're in a wedding dress, you're acting like you're the star, she said. Well, I kind of am the star today, since it's my pre-wedding shoot. We need to move quickly, or it'll be a problem for everyone, I replied. She scoffed. Typical. You try to be liked by being so considerate, but really, you're just plain. And just so you know, that dress doesn't suit you at all, Lauren whispered to me, making sure our parents, Scott, and his mother couldn't hear her. Just as I was about to respond, she walked away. I was about to respond, but Lauren just walked away with a smile. The photo session began, but her cruel words lingered in my mind, making it hard for me to smile naturally. 
As the pre-wedding shoot went on, my smile felt more and more forced. Are you nervous, Amy? Asked Scott's mother, my future mother-in-law. We hadn't met many times, but she was always gentle and kind. I'm just having a little trouble smiling, I said. Sorry to keep you waiting. It's okay. You look beautiful in that dress. Take your time with the photos. You deserve to be admired for as long as possible, she reassured me. Her kind words helped for a moment, but Lauren soon ruined the mood again. Are you going to make trouble for your in-laws? I feel sorry for them, having such an incompetent daughter-in-law. Who would want someone like you? Lauren said with a smirk. Lauren, please stop. I responded, trying to stay calm. At that moment, my future mother-in-law stepped in. She smiled warmly and said, It's so nice of you to come and support your sister, but this is Amy and my son's special day. Please give them some space. She gently took Lauren by the hand and led her to the corner of the venue. As the shoot continued, Lauren stood there with a sour look on her face, clicking her tongue in frustration, making the atmosphere tense. Maybe your sister feels like I've stolen you from her, Scott joked, trying to lighten the mood. I'm so sorry, I apologized, feeling the weight of Lauren's presence even more. It made the day feel exhausting, but eventually, the shoot was done, and I started feeling more prepared for the big day. There's no such thing as being too prepared for one of the most important days of your life. As my wedding day approached, I double-checked everything to make sure it was perfect. Scott and I traveled from our new home to the venue, and when we arrived, we went to separate dressing rooms to get ready. Soon, the moment I had been dreaming of for so long would finally come. I would wear the wedding dress I had always imagined and vow eternal love to Scott. A childhood dream was about to become real. I felt a mix of nervousness and pure joy as I approached the door to the bridal dressing room. Just as I was about to open the door, it swung open from the inside. To my surprise, it was Lauren who stepped out, closing her bag with a smug look on her face. Lauren, what are you doing here? I asked, confused. Oops, I mistook it for the bathroom, she said, smirking. Is this really the bride's dressing room? It's so shabby, but I guess it suits you. With those cruel words, Lauren quickly left. It was strange for her to be here so early, and I couldn't help but feel uneasy about her odd behavior. I walked into the bridal dressing room and was shocked by what I saw. The room, which had been elegantly decorated to create a calm and peaceful atmosphere, now showed a terrible scene. My wedding dress, the one I had dreamed of, was hanging there, completely slashed and ruined. What is this? I exclaimed. The dress, with its beautiful lace details, was supposed to be mine. I stood frozen in front of the destroyed dress, unable to believe what I was seeing. Just then, the makeup and wardrobe staff came into the room. They saw me standing still, staring at the mess, and couldn't hide their shock. I asked them if anyone had been in the room, and they told me that my sister, Lauren, had asked them to leave, saying she was setting up a surprise for me. Could Lauren have done this? Why would she ruin my dress like this? As much as I didn't want to believe it, everything pointed to her being the one who did it. Her strange behavior ever since I got engaged, and the way she had glared at me during the pre-wedding shoot, made me even more suspicious. With shaky hands, I pulled out my phone and called Lauren. She answered right away. What do you want? Lauren asked. Trying to hold back my tears, I asked her directly. Lauren, can you tell me what you were doing in my dressing room earlier? Huh? Didn't I tell you I mistook it for the bathroom? Have you already forgotten, or are you really that dumb? She replied. That's a lie. You ruined my wedding dress, didn't you? I confronted her, my emotions rising. Lauren laughed. What? Something wrong with the dress? It's pretty awful that you'd suspect me. Maybe it's just karma for your bad attitude. You sound like you're enjoying this. That just proves you did it. Why did you destroy my dress? I demanded, my voice filled with anger. Oh, what a hassle, Lauren said, sounding bored. Do you have any proof that I did it? And honestly, isn't it weird that someone as plain as you is getting married before me? You'd probably look better in that torn-up dress anyway. Even the groom and the guests would agree. With that, Lauren hung up the phone. I stood there, staring at the dress in front of me. It was beyond repair. The staff, 
who had left the room earlier at Lauren's request, kept apologizing over and over. But no matter how many times they said sorry, the dress couldn't be fixed. I kept telling them, it's okay, but inside, I wasn't sure if anything was okay at all. I thought I wouldn't be able to go through with the ceremony in the middle of all this stress and sadness. Then, there was a gentle knock on the door of the bridal dressing room. Amy, how's the preparation going? My mother-in-law asked as she stepped in. She was bringing some refreshments for the staff, but the moment she saw the ruined dress, her face turned serious. What happened to the dress? She asked, shocked. I started to explain. The truth is, my sister, my mother-in-law listened quietly and nodded. I see, she said, but it's a good thing we prepared a backup dress, just in case. Backup dress? What do you mean? I asked, confused. I have a suggestion, she said, her usual calm tone replaced by a more serious expression. She laid out a plan. If I supported her idea, she promised to help make everything perfect. Thanks to her strategy, I found the strength to move forward with the wedding I had almost considered canceling. Just watch, Lauren, I thought to myself. I'll show you how happy and radiant I can be. Seeing my renewed energy, the staff got even more excited and worked hard to make everything perfect. My emotions were different from how I had felt that morning. I was now ready to face the wedding head-on. The magnificent chapel was set outside, and as the solemn music began to play, the large doors in front of me opened. My father was waiting there, and the aisles stretched out before us, leading to the altar where Scott stood, waiting for me. As I walked down the aisle with my father, I heard guests gasp in surprise. My father had tears in his eyes, and Scott, who didn't know what had happened with the dress, looked surprised as well. With my veil still on, I stole a glance at Scott's face, then quickly looked at the family seats. There was Lauren, expecting me to show up in a torn or badly prepared dress. Her expression was priceless, her mouth was wide open in shock, and she couldn't move. I walked past her, straight to Scott. After my father gave me away, I took Scott's hand. I noticed Lauren fidgeting with a handkerchief she was holding. We exchanged rings, shared our vows, kissed, and walked out to a shower of flower petals. As we passed Lauren during our exit, I saw her pulling on the handkerchief, which finally tore at her hands. This ceremony wasn't about troubling my sister, it was about sharing our joy. At that moment, I forgot all about Lauren and focused on the happiness of the day. After we finished taking group photos outside the chapel, we were directed to the reception venue. It was good that everything had gone smoothly in the end. I was really surprised you chose such a beautiful dress, my husband said as we shared a few words before heading back to our dressing rooms. The atmosphere was light and happy as guests started making their way to the reception. Suddenly, I heard Lauren shout loudly, Wait! Why are you wearing such a nice dress? Lauren pointed at me. What's with that long veil, the tiara, and even your shiny chest? Why are you standing out so much? You're supposed to be less noticeable than me. You don't have the right to act so confident. Lauren's words were loud and full of frustration, even though she seemed to admire the dress at the same time. The dress I wore was indeed beautiful. It had a long veil made of high-quality lace, a glamorous tiara decorated with Swarovski crystals, and the silk fabric shimmered under the light. The full hem of the dress gave it a royal look, and the chest was delicately adorned with crystals, too. It doesn't matter if I'm beautiful or not. Every bride has the right to wear a dress she loves and enjoy her special day. You always look down on me, Lauren. But who do you think you are? I shot back, standing my ground. Lauren scoffed. Everyone knows that beautiful people are above the ugly ones. Ugly people have a lower status. Look at me. I take care of myself, and I'm clearly more beautiful, she said, turning to the guests with a smug smile. The guests, including our parents, were shocked into silence. Seeing their reaction, Lauren took it as agreement and continued, See? I'm definitely more beautiful, yet I don't even have a boyfriend, and my ugly sister gets married first? I can't accept this. Her anger flared, and she glared at me, before suddenly lunging at me. It's pitiful that someone as ugly as you would wear this. Take it off right now and apologize to the dress, she shouted. Lauren, stop. This is an important wedding dress. 
It's borrowed from Scott's mom. It's the dress she wore at her own wedding, so don't touch it. I cried out, trying to stop her. Before Lauren could cause any more trouble, the Venny staff and Scott quickly stepped in to hold her back. She struggled at first but froze when she heard what I said. Wait, so it's a second-hand dress? She sneered. So you were wearing rags after all. Treating something second-hand like it's special, you really are poor. Plus, getting rags from your mother-in-law? You're already being bullied, aren't you? No dreams, no hopes. Serves you right, she said with a cruel smirk. Her words stung, but I stayed calm, knowing that nothing she said could ruin my day. I will not allow you to call this dress a rag. Scott's mother quietly intervened, stepping forward with a calm smile. This dress is a haute couture piece, custom made. It originally cost $500,000. $500,000? Lauren exclaimed, shocked. The price of silk and Swarovski crystals has gone up since then, so it's likely worth even more now, Scott's mother continued. We've had experts take care of it, so it's in perfect condition. Hearing this, Lauren's face turned pale. The mention of the actual price seemed to shake her deeply. Why would you give such an expensive dress to my sister? Lauren stammered. Because Amy is kind and will make a wonderful bride, Scott's mother said gently. It brings me great joy to know that my treasured wedding dress is being worn by my dear daughter-in-law. That's not the point. Why was such an amazing dress prepared in the first place? Lauren pressed, clearly upset. She had probably assumed there was no backup dress when she ruined the original one. Scott's mother smiled slightly at Lauren and said, Lauren, I noticed how you glared at Amy during the pre-wedding shoot, even after I asked you to give her space. I saw you looking at that dress on your phone and had a feeling you might try something. I thought you were just an old lady, Lauren muttered under her breath. Yes, but our family is well off and we're very sensitive to other people's intentions, Scott's mother replied smoothly. That comment seemed to hit Lauren hard. Wait, you're wealthy? So Scott is rich, too? He's rich and handsome. Then why did he choose my sisters? Lauren shouted, growing more confused and frustrated. Why did I marry Amy? Scott said, joining the conversation with a shy smile. I was planning to talk about it in my speech at the reception. He turned to Lauren, who was now red with frustration. When I first went out with Amy, she suggested we split the bill. I was surprised. It was the first time anyone had ever suggested that. She even wanted to split the cost of our apartment rent and the wedding expenses. What? Going Dutch? I don't get it. If Scott is rich, he should pay for everything. Amy, you should let a man take care of you. That's why you're flawed woman, Lauren criticized. Scott shook his head. That's exactly it. Every woman I've dated saw me as just a wallet, but Amy didn't. She's truly independent, and I realized I didn't want to be with anyone else but her. He then continued, speaking about other reasons why he loved me, standing firm in his words. Lauren clicked her tongue in frustration, clearly unhappy with the answers she had received. I can't listen to this. It's boring, and I'm not interested in a reception where my plain sister is the star. Maybe I should just go home, Lauren said, venting her frustration. Then, as usual, she lost her motivation and relaxed her shoulders. This was typical of her. Either she'd cause a scene until she got what she wanted or until she got bored. As her sister, I had always tolerated her behavior, but it was clear her personality hadn't improved as she grew older. I realized it was time to teach her a final lesson. Grabbing her arm to stop her as she yawned, I said, this is a good time to tell you. You'll have to pay for the dress you ruined. Lauren grimaced then laughed smugly. Me? Ruin the dress? There's no proof. Why don't you save your bedtime stories for when you're asleep? She shrugged off my hand and chuckled, clearly pleased with herself for ruining my chosen dress. But I stayed calm. It was time to show her what happens when someone tries to destroy another's happiness. Seeing how satisfied she looked, I smiled and said, unfortunately for you, everything was recorded on the surveillance cameras. I had them installed in the bridal dressing room. I'm even thinking about filing a criminal complaint for property damage. I hate the idea of having a criminal in the family on my wedding day. Lauren's smile disappeared instantly, replaced by shock and panic. What? You have cameras? Since when do weddings have that? 
It's not an option at every wedding, I replied. I had them installed just for today, and they'll be removed tomorrow. How can you just install and remove things on your own? That's ridiculous, Lauren said, still in disbelief. This venue is the wedding venue I own, I explained. What? You're the owner? I thought you were just a plain office worker, she exclaimed, her shock growing. Plain or not, it's true I was an office worker until recently, I continued. But my passion for wedding dresses and weddings grew, and I decided to open my own wedding venue. It wasn't just my savings that made it possible. Scott's mother, who is also an investor, supported me, helping me create a wedding venue for brides. And this place? It's the one I manage. Lauren's face twisted with disbelief. No way. I've never heard anything like this from mom or dad. Ask them to keep it a secret from you. I figured you'd think it was ridiculous for someone with my ugly appearance to run a company, I said. As Lauren listened, her expression softened. I could see the struggle in her mind as she tried to process everything I had just revealed. I have a lot of wealthy relatives, I mentioned. Lauren's eyes lit up. Oh. Then you can introduce me to a rich man, right? Yay, she exclaimed, clearly missing the point. Lauren, do you really think we can continue as sisters after this? You tore up a dress that was special to me. I never want to see your face again, I said, my anger simmering. What? Why are you saying that? It was just a little prank. I already said I'm sorry, didn't I? Lauren's apology felt empty, and she acted like it didn't matter. Her careless attitude pushed me over the edge. A little prank? You think ruining something important to me is just a joke? I will never forgive you for this. It's good I have this beautiful dress from Scott's mom, but the one you destroyed was also precious to me. I'm definitely going to ask for compensation. Compensation? Are you serious? How much does a wedding dress even cost? I don't have any real savings. Lauren panicked. If you don't pay, I'll report it to the police. Did you really think you could bully your ugly, plain sister all your life and get away with it? That's no joke, Lauren. Grow up. I said firmly. My words hit her hard, and she collapsed into a chair, powerless. Our parents, who had been quietly watching, started crying. Their tears were different from the joyful ones they shed during the ceremony. Lauren's selfish actions had hurt them deeply, and I realized just how much sadness she had caused them. Amy is truly amazing. She's the kind of entrepreneur I'm proud to support. I'm lucky she wore my wedding dress and that I invested in her business, Scott's mother said warmly. Mom, that's my line. Please don't say it before I do, Scott joked with a smile. Watching Scott and his mom talk so casually, I felt a wave of relief. After sending Lauren home, we returned to the reception, which continued warmly despite the earlier drama. It ended up being the best wedding for me because I was able to strengthen my bond with Scott's family. After the wedding, our parents were furious with Lauren. They apologized to me for being too easy on her for so long and strongly condemned her actions. Lauren was expelled from the house by our parents. She couldn't change her job to afford the dress she ruined, so she rented a small apartment near our parents' house. Staying close to home meant she couldn't escape the gossip about what had happened at my wedding. Since we were close in age, the news spread quickly and Lauren became the talk of the town. Every time she tried to reconnect with old friends, they avoided her, which upset her so much that she moved out of state. The long commute to work drained her time and savings, leaving her struggling financially. Now, her entire salary and bonuses go toward paying for the dress, and she lives a tight, restricted life. Once a confident trendsetter, she can no longer afford makeup or fashionable clothes at work, and her lifestyle has completely changed. Now, Lauren quietly goes through her days, wearing messy clothes and occasionally casting jealous glances at her colleagues. Her only escape is social media, but her posts, full of despair, are driving more people away. Meanwhile, Scott and I are happily enjoying our marriage. He stays busy with his job, and I've started designing unique wedding dresses at our venue, just like my mother-in-law suggested. Investors who believe in my love for wedding dresses have encouraged me, saying that if I love them, I can definitely create dresses that brides will adore. Though it's a new and challenging task, there's a special joy in crafting the perfect dress 
using beautiful lace, tulle, and silk. The memory of the dress Lauren destroyed still hurts, but looking at the photos of me in Scott's mother's dress, where we made our vows, helps me heal a little each day. The best part is being there when a bride I've dressed celebrates the happiest day of her life. This has brought me a new sense of joy in weddings. I'm thankful every day for Scott's love and for my mother-in-law, who supported me when my dress was ruined and continues to support me in my work. Oddly enough, I even feel a bit thankful to Lauren. Her actions only made me realize how much I truly love wedding dresses.